Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of the Clips of the Week. Hard to believe that we're through four weeks of the regular season and reaching the halfway point. We hope everyone enjoyed the sunny weather to this point, as it looks like it's going to start raining this week. We have 10 clips to look at this week. The first few clips we're going to look at are the importance of off ball and dead ball officiating. Oftentimes in these situations, we can catch personal fouls, late hits, unnecessary roughness, and allows us to keep control of the game. So with that said, let's jump into the clips. And the first few we're going to look at have to do with dead ball and off ball officiating. So on this first clip, we've got a couple things to look at. Now, you'll notice here we have five players in the offensive backfield. So we're going to have a foul at the snap for an illegal formation. As the play develops, we want to watch what one of the members of the offensive team does after his teammate scores. And you'll notice that there was a late hit in the end zone. So let's watch that again. And let's watch contact after the runner scores by a member of the offensive team with the late hit. We should have a flag here for a personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Now this would result in multiple fouls against the offensive team, a live ball and a dead ball. And we would administer both penalties, five yards for the illegal formation and then 15 yards for the personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Now, three officials could have caught this. The back judge who has no runner responsibility and should be cleaning up behind the play the head linesman who signals for touchdown but could be easily looking through the runner, or the referee who no longer has runner responsibility and would also be cleaning up behind the play. Unfortunately, we missed the personal foul, and these are the type of plays we want to make sure that we get as a crew. So this is the try just a couple of plays later. And again, keep in mind that we have missed the personal foul late hit. So tensions are high here. And on a try, we'd like to see wings come running in towards the action and towards the players after the try. Tensions are always high anyway after a score, and it's a good time for us to come in, make our presence known, and separate players if we need to. And we're going to see here how a member of the defense has a late hit against a member of the kicking team. Unfortunately, no one caught that. We could have the referee see this, but they're responsible for the kicker and holder. And had our line judge been running in and continue to officiate while coming towards the players, they should have easily caught this and had a flag for a late hit and a personal foul. Just a reminder that it's important to continue to officiate even after the play is over. So on this one, we want to look at a potential blindside block during the course of the play. And admittedly, this is a difficult call because this is a long developing play and our wing is going to have their attention downfield with receivers. And as the referee here, we know that we're responsible for the quarterback, but we need to make sure that we're trying to look through them and at possible blocks in front of them. And we're going to get a blindside block here as the offensive lineman peels back against the grain and makes contact against a defensive player who does not see this block coming. Now, had this been with open hands, this would have been a legal block. But as we can see on the replay here, the offensive lineman delivers a forceful blow to the defender who cannot see the block coming and hits him in the chest with the shoulder and not with open hands. So again, this would be a difficult call, but as a referee, we wanna to try to be able to keep our eyes wide and not focus solely on the quarterback in this situation. We did miss a blindside block on this play. On this free kick, we're going to have an excellent job done by the white hat here, who's going to transition the returner to the head linesman and focus on blocks in front of the returner. And we have the player highlighted here. And this is a difficult block to see, but the referee in this case does an excellent job and we're going to see this player move laterally and deliver a very forceful block against the oncoming member of the kicking team. So a great pickup here by the referee. Let's look at that one more time. And the important thing to remember here is that the referee has now transitioned the returner to the head linesman 
and is looking in front and is able to pick this up. So again, we don't want too many sets of eyes on the ball carrier any one time. So excellent job by this referee. Similarly here, we have a great call by the referee in this game. This clip isn't the best because it starts, unfortunately, after the snap. And so we'll look at this one in slow motion so we can capture this. But in this case, the referee has also given up the ball carrier and is looking through the runner and is gonna notice a block below the waist by a member of the defense. Oftentimes when we think of blocks below the waist, we think of the offense. But a defender who goes low against a lead blocker, such in this case here, we are gonna have a foul for a block below the waist. And this is a safety foul, not only for the offensive team member, but for the defensive team member as well. And we wanna make sure that we're seeing these type of blocks, having good eye discipline, and making sure that we don't have too many eyes on the runner. So these last two clips are a good example of the referee transitioning from the runner to blocks ahead of the runner and catching a blindside block and a block below the waist. Excellent work by these two officials. On this play, there's a couple of important details we wanna look at. First would be the wing mechanics and the importance of staying on the line of scrimmage. We absolutely approve and recommend that wing officials back up into the offensive backfield if they're threatened and get out of harm's way. However, as long as possible, you also need to hold the line of scrimmage because you are primary for fouls at line of scrimmage, such as ineligibles downfield and an illegal forward pass. So with that in mind, let's watch this play. And we're going to notice that the quarterback is going to scramble to the left-hand side. And the head linesman is going to back up a couple of yards. Now, instinctually, we understand that. But the line of scrimmage is not threatened too much in terms of being too close to the head linesman. And what we're going to see here is that the pass is going to be thrown right at the line of scrimmage. And the head linesman is not in position to be able to rule on this. Now, we can't see the line judge, and we're hoping that they're in position to be able to rule on this pass. Now, we're not here necessarily to debate whether or not this is an illegal forward pass, but primarily we want to focus on the mechanics of the head linesman and the importance of staying in your spot and be able to view the line of scrimmage. As a reminder, in high school, a player of A who throws the ball with both feet of, their, of the passer in or behind the neutral zone when the ball is released is a legal forward pass. So again, it's a legal forward pass if a player of the offense throws the ball with both feet of the passer in or behind the neutral zone when the ball is released. And this is a close play. And again, we're not gonna debate necessarily whether this was a foul or not, but again, the importance of wings maintaining the line of scrimmage as you are primary on a call like this. Now, normally when we show clips, we have cut out the audio in order to make the listening experience better. But on this play, we're gonna have the audio and we would recommend turning it up. And that's just to illustrate the importance of having a hard whistle when forward progress has stopped. Additionally, we wanna look at the mechanics here by the center judge and the referee. And important to make sure that you don't get too close to the action for self-preservation purposes. So on this play, we have forward progress stopped around the 33. Now you can maybe make an argument and it appears that the runners still have their feet and might be able to break free, but they were always in the grasp and control of a member of the defense. And it's not until the runner is back by the 26 or so that we actually get a whistle. And it appears that we're gonna spot this back there as well. So make sure we know where forward progress is and let's make sure that we also know that we need to blow the whistle hard on a play like this and kill the play so that we don't have the runner blown up by a member of the defense. So again, let's just take a look at this and ask yourself, when would you have blown the whistle?
So on this play, we want to look at the back judge. And as a reminder, while we're primary on the goal line for passes and runs in the red zone when the wings don't have goal line responsibility, that doesn't mean that we always stop on the goal line. Sometimes the end line is more important, such as a play like this. Our back judge is going to be threatened, but they stop on the goal line, and the receiver catches the pass behind them. So a couple of things. One, you could easily get hit by a member of the defense or offense. But two, had there been a bobble here, the end line is much more important. The goal line doesn't mean anything anymore. So let's watch that play again. And as a back judge here, you want to stay deeper than the closest receiver to you. Now, if the pass goes underneath, you could step up to the goal line. But on this case, keep going and get to the end line because that's the more important line on a play like this. This is a somewhat similar play where the back judge stays deeper and ends up being in good position to rule on the pass. And in this case, they happen to be on the goal line. So we wanted to show this play for a couple of reasons. One, the back judge does a good job of staying deeper than the deepest receiver and is in good position to rule on the goal line. Had the goal line no longer been a threat and it was the end line, again, they were in great position. Secondly, we wanna pay attention to the receiver at the top of the screen here. It appears that perhaps their knee pads are up above their knees. And just a reminder that players need to have their knees covered. And if a player is in the game with their knees exposed, they should go off for a play. We're also going to watch what this player is wearing at the end of the play. So again, we're going to get a long pass over the middle. Back judge gets deep and they're in excellent position. They spin with the players. Also notice that the player here has what appears to be a hood or a balaclava or a ski mask. And just as a reminder, these are illegal equipment. Any loose article of clothing such as this is illegal equipment. And we can see here that this player's knees are clearly exposed as well. So officials, we need to catch things like this, uh, the knees in particular, that's an easy one. But just as a reminder and a clarification, especially as the temperatures may get cooler, loose clothing such as a ski mask, hoodie that's not attached to a shirt or a balaclava, those are all illegal equipment. And if we see those on the field, that player needs to be sent out for a play to get that taken care of. Well, that is it for this week's Clips of the Week. We hope you enjoyed them. Good luck with your games this week. As always, if you have a clip that you'd like to share with us, please send it to the email address on your screen. Also, as a reminder that all clips have been vetted through Oregon SRI, Kevin Hatfield. If you have a question about the rulings in any of these clips, please direct those questions to Kevin at his email address. Again, good luck with your games this week, and we'll talk to you next week.